Hello, welcome to uh, another Glenys Garnet Creative Images video. I'm going to do us a little bit of something different today. Um, I recently purchased uh, a Canon 70D DSLR camera, mainly because I've been getting a little bit frustrated that with the Fuji, it only does um, two double X. It does a double exposure, and it's only JPEG. And um, certain models of Canon uh, do up to nine multiple exposures. So I've I've bought myself a second hand Canon 70D, and I've been having a little bit of a play. And I produced these abstract images uh, the other day and popped them up on Twitter. Um, got quite a nice reaction from them, but I thought I would take you through how I've done the edits on them. Um, I'll show you in Lightroom how I've created the first two, which were done exclusively in Lightroom. And this third one, which has got quite a lot of colour shifting, hue saturation shift, that I couldn't do in Lightroom. So that's been done in Photoshop. So I will show you how that, that's been done in Photoshop as well. Now, I originally edited these images, took them straight from the camera onto my Android tablet. I've got a Samsung tablet and I like to play about uh, sometimes in Snapseed, but sometimes I use a, an application called PixLR, P-I-X-L-R. And it's just a little free app you can download. And I quite like the way it utilizes the color use saturation shifts you can you can apply and some of the filters that it's got. It's quite, quite nice. It's got a few nice little different ones. Um, so I thought I would try and replicate and often what I will do is when I'm when I've done something on the tablet I like the look and feel of it and I'll often then replicate it in Lightroom or in Photoshop and um, I find it's quite a nice way of working because I can use I can sit and, and, and play about with some of the images see how they look it gives me a, a, a chance to also go through and edit and see what I've got and then it makes my workflow a little bit quicker when I get them into Lightroom. So what we'll do is we'll go into Lightroom and I'll show you the original image here, which is on the left. Now, what I would normally do when I'm doing something like this is I will straight away create a, a virtual copy in Lightroom. Uh, and you do that by right mouse clicking on the image and you'll see down here, you've got the option to create a virtual copy. And all that does is it creates another instance of the image in your Lightroom catalog. And you can create as many of those as you like. So you can see on the left here, we've got the original image. I've not done anything to it. That's just as it was the raw file straight out of camera. And on the right here, we've got the final image. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the, this image and go into the develop mode. And I'm going to show you how I edited this. And, and I think this one is a stack of three images. I think it's got, I did the, the sky, I photographed the sky. I've got some trees in the background and then I overlaid it finally. I've got some nice corda lines in my garden and I overlaid it with the, like the shadow effect of the light coming through the corda lines, quite liked it. Um, and um, so that that's that's that one. I think it's I think it's three images. Anyway, that's uh, irrelevant at the moment. So what I want to do is I want to show you how I edited this image. Now, what I will do when I when I've completed an image is I will usually take a snapshot. And the the reason for that is this: if I reset that image, it goes back to the original, and I may have forgotten how I've adjusted it all and changed it so by creating a snapshot when I finished it which I've called finished image if I click on that it will reset all of those changes I've made to the image and you'll see if we look at this image let's come down the um, uh, the the panel here and the adjustments panel you'll see how I've applied the adjustments on here a little bit of contrast just to give it a little bit more depth in the um, in, in the darker parts I've left the highlights, I've brought the shadows down a little bit, I've increased the whites a little bit to get some brightness in it, and I've brought down the blacks. I'm just going to click that back on there so we get to the original. Um, increase the clarity a little bit, and I was going to originally go into the black and white mode and just apply a split toning effect, but sometimes I find it better to to reduce, take the back, 
vibrance and saturation down and then go into split toning and then if I want to then adjust these, I can go back again, because if you go into black and white, let's do that. You'll see what happens is the, the vibrance and vibrance and saturation gets grayed out. So you can't then use it again. So we go back to the color version and do it that way. Um, so most of this has been done using the split toning panel. And you'll see on here that I've used more or less almost the same color for the highlights and the shadows and it's like an orange color and we've bumped the saturation up quite high on that so let's just have a quick look in here if you if we, if we scroll around you'll see you you can go around and you can you can pick out the color i find this quite a lot easier than actually using the slider sometimes it gives me a better way of seeing the colors that you use and you can be a little bit more precise with it as well um, so that's for the the highlights and then the shadows is more or less the same you're going around and you're looking for the right color that you want for the shadows um that's quite nice that um anyway go back to the finished image and you'll see that the saturation is bumped up quite high on those two shadows and highlights there and that's that on that one really that's 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 the um the first one that we've done. So let's go back to the second one now. And the second one is this Cordeline image. And this was just Cordeline's crisscross, basically two or three images of the Cordeline's turning the camera around, taking them portrait and then landscape and so on and so forth. And I end up with this quite nice abstract image. Now, this one has been done. Oops, sorry. Let's go get you the right image there. This one's been done by putting it into black and white. And I've made some adjustments to the whites and the blacks because I wanted to bring them out and make them stand out quite, quite well. The blacks brought the blacks down and the, the whites up and brought the shadows down and the highlights. And I haven't done much else to that um let's just click on finished image so we don't lose that so this is purely a split toning and it's quite a nice way of doing um applying coloring to your black and white images uh, is split toning because you can actually you've got a bit of control over the shadows and the highlights but in this case I've, I've left the highlights alone i wanted to leave the highlights in the white color and I wanted just to lift the shadows and, 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 and tone it that way. And it, it's almost like a bit of a sepia type tone. So let's just have a quick look at the tone here. It's like a yellow tone. If you just move around, you'll see we get an effect of the tone in there on the on the shadows. Um, let's go back to finish that image. And the balance here, what I've done is if we take the balance right to the left, because we're only using one color or we're just using the shadows color. If we go there, that, that's the full extent of the colour and in the shadows. So what I've done is I've just reduced it a little bit to the right. So reducing off the, if you like, the midpoint from the midpoint. And I think it was set at 24, something like that. So I'm getting that nice sepia type style effect. And that's the that's that that's the second image. And if we go back into Photoshop, you'll see you get the idea. We've got those two images now. So we'll go back into Lightroom there and we'll go back into the library. And next down is this third image. Now, this is a little bit more complex. Uh, you can see on here I've got the original image, which was an image of the corder lines again, crisscrossed. I think it's got a background image of out of focus of, of the sky and um, some trees i think in the background um and this image on the left which is the image that i create i created in uh, photoshop now in order to do this straight from lightroom we would just right mouse click on the image and we go edit and edit in photoshop and that will go off it will open the image in photoshop and then when we've made the edits in photoshop it will save it as an as a TIFF file or a PSD file, whichever you've set in your in, in your uh, Lightroom options, and it will save it as a new image into your catalog. So that's what this is on the side, and this is now a TIFF image, um, 
uh, and it's been added to the Lightroom catalog. And we can make changes to that uh, the same way we would in anything in the Lightroom catalog. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into Photoshop and we're going to open up the image. I'll just pop that down out of the way. I'm going to open the, up, up the image in, in Photoshop. And you see here on the right, what I first thing I did was create a copy of the image using Control J. Then these are the adjustments I've made in Lightroom. The first adjustment was a saturation and a hue adjustment. And that was really to get that blue color instead of the yellow in the leaves. And if you look on the um, on the settings here, you'll see I've just bumped the saturation up to about 100. Sorry, I'm sorry, not the saturation. I've just changed the hue to to, to basically take out that yellow color on those to, to the blue color. I think we were on 53, something like that. So that's got me that color in there. I've then applied a color balance adjustment. And if we go into color balance, you've got a little bit more flexibility in a color balance adjustment. Um, and you can apply the color changes to shadows, midtones, and highlights. And again, this is just something you've got to do and you've got to learn how the, how, how the different colors affect. But you can see I've made some adjustments here in these shadows, midtones and highlights to try and get that. Let's go to the midtone. You see, I'm trying to get that background color, that orangey color, if I can. I'm just going to take that back so I don't change that. And then the final two layers here are the curbs and levels adjustments. And that's just basically just to give me some um, adjustments in the shadows and the highlights, I've darkened the shadows, um, boosted the highlights a tiny bit. And then the same with levels, I've applied some adjustments to the darks and the lights in there. So that's, and then that's the final image in Photoshop. Now, once I've finished that, it will come back into Lightroom. When you see here, uh, we've got the image on the left here in Lightroom. And if we go into the develop mode, you'll see that I've actually reduced the contrast a little bit on this. I've, I've increased the exposure a little bit, but I've also made a couple of changes to the color. Um, I wasn't happy with the color I had, so I've made some adjustments to the uh, the blues in the image, I've reduced the saturation a little bit, and I've also changed some of the the colours in aqua, some of the aqua colours, um, and you'll you get the idea as you go through those colours. Those are the only two I've done. It's got the finished image and we're back there, and I think that's it. Other than just reduce the contrast a little bit, and I've reduced the vibrance and the saturation a little bit. Uh, I felt it was too too bright and too saturated so we've brought the saturation down a little bit and that is that final image so if we go back into photoshop and we'll have a look at those original images let's just get rid of that for you and you'll see that these are the images i did in pixel r and i've now got those images edited in lightroom and there we go Thank you. Bye-bye.